Welcome back to Litigation Help. My name is Heather Hoylitzwin. Today, we're going to talk about a process called MEDARP, which is a combination of mediation and arbitration that's used to settle disputes out of court. Now, for those of you who want to find out more about the basics of mediation and arbitration separately, um, don't forget to check out our videos on these options by clicking on the I button above. I'll also include the links to these videos in the description box below. So in today's video though, we're gonna be discussing the hybrid approach, MedR. So joining me here today are two family law legal professionals, Laura Tassia and Marty Klein. So Laura is an accredited family mediator with a background in psychology, mental health, research and program development. She has a master of laws in dispute resolution. She's the founder of Family Mediation Group, a team of professionals who offer mediation and arbitration services to family law clients. And I will, of course, um, put the link to their website in the description below. Her group has their own YouTube channel as well called Love, Divorce, and Everything in Between. So don't forget to check that out as well. She also has appeared on many videos on litigation help. Our second speaker today is Marty Klein. Marty has practiced family law throughout the GTA for over three decades. He's a certified specialist in family mediation, family arbitration, and qualified family arbitration screener with the Family Dispute Resolution Institute of Ontario. He's also an accredited mediator with the Ontario Association of Family Mediation. Marty is trained in the collaborative process and in parental coordination. He has been he has also been a deputy judge in the small claims court in Brampton for several years. He served as a dispute resolution officer or DRO in the Superior Court of Justice in Brampton. So both Marty and Laura passionately believe in out of court options for families. Welcome both. Thank Morning. you. Good afternoon. So, right, um, I was wondering, um, I was wondering if one of you could actually start us off by um, giving us a refresher on um, mediation and arbitration, like kind of separately, because uh, um, I, I have this, uh, it seems like there are a lot of people who are still kind of a little bit confused about the two processes. So Laura, maybe you can start us off. So what exactly is mediation again? Sure, I'm happy to talk about my favorite topic. Right. Uh, mediation is a, yeah, it's, it, it's a dispute resolution process, uh, um, also known as an alternative dispute resolution process, ADR or FDR um, in the family, uh, where families are generally, or parties are generally um, trying to resolve uh, their dispute in an amicable way. However, I do have to add the caveat that I don't necessarily see mediation as just a dispute resolution process. Um, I do see it also as a reorganization, reorganizing process of your family's affairs or post-separation because sometimes families do not have a dispute, do not have a conflict. They actually just need some information and guidance on how to best enter the next chapter. So if, it, if it's a separation or if it's a other family, uh, um, family type of um, uh, issue. Um, so Marty, yeah, so what is arbitration? How is that different? So arbitration is a bit, I would say, a lot more formal. Uh, bear in mind, we're, we're living in a, a COVID day and age where everything's being done virtually now, including in the courts. So very few court appearances are actually happening in person. Most of the stuff that's happening now is by way of uh, teleconference, uh, video teleconferencing. So um, the uh, arbitration is very much like a trial. So it's a lot more, I wouldn't say so much serious, but a lot more um, uh, binding, uh, certainly binding on parties. Um, the arbitration is run like a trial and uh, it just depends how um, technical you want to get. A lot of people don't want to get a reporter these days because you can do a Zoom recording, uh, which is just as good, and they can save themselves $500. It depends on the circumstance. Of course, if you're dealing with, I mean, you have companies that are multi-millionaire companies that are doing arbitrations, and, and 
they all have, <clears throat> even if they have a Zoom or a, otherwise a, a teleconference, they'll um, uh, probably have reporters available. But I'm finding, generally speaking, that people will go with a Zoom conferencing. Um, so you call witnesses, uh, you have evidence given, there are exhibits, uh, people are commissioned in or infer affirmed in or sworn in before they give their evidence. And uh, the result of which is uh, um, an, arbit an arbitral award. It, if you want to be a mediator today uh, in, in our country, in Canada at this point, uh, I believe also in the United States, you can just hang up any shingle and just call yourself a mediator. For arbitration, you still have to take the added course. And those, so there's a, a you know, 40 hour or so course that you have to take, plus you have to take domestic violence training and, uh, and, for, and also for, uh, to, to see if there are any power and balance issues. So there's a bit more involved in it and there is an actual arbitration act. In most provinces, they have their own arbitration act and uh, in Ontario, it's called the Arbitration Act 1991 Ontario. So it's, um, it, it's a bit more complicated. Is it binding? Absolutely binding. And uh, is it subject to appeal? Absolutely appeal and to review. So within 30 days of a decision, there's a provision in the Arbitration Act where um, either the tribunal or the arbitrator, him or herself, can um, raise an issue with respect to an error that may have been made or on the request of another party if to avoid um, an injustice as it says in, in the act um, you can ask for review and um, corrections can't be made and i've done that before there's no question a lot of them are typos you know most of the time but but if they're substantial then they could effectively you know change around the entire order. When it comes to a, an appeal, it's not the last word, the arbitration, because the court will have the last word. It's really hard to appeal an arbitral award. If all of the things are in place, uh, people have obtained independent legal advice, which again is a difference between mediation and arbitration, because for mediation, you don't necessarily need, well, you don't need, uh, or there's no requirement for independent legal advice, but for arbitration, because of its binding effect, or for mediation arbitration, parties have to enter into an agreement, and uh, in that agreement, they have to take, even if they're going to self-represent, they still have to go to a lawyer who's going to tell them, you realize the consequences, and make them aware of that. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lot more formal. I'm not a formal kind of a person, so I don't have, uh, even when I was a, a deputy judge, I, I didn't really, I wasn't that formal in the courtroom. So I, it just depends on the personality. But generally speaking, um, you can hash around and throw along all sorts of ideas and, and generate options and everything in mediation. When it comes to arbitration, then obviously if there are 10 issues and five have been resolved and five of them have to go to arbitration, then it becomes a lot more serious and you have to base stuff not on, on hearsay, but on evidence and the law counts, no question about it. And the arbitrator has to apply the law to the decision that he or she makes. Whereas mediation, you shouldn't be giving legal advice really. I, I, it's hard to avoid it, to be honest with you. And I think every mediator would say that, but, um, but, Definitely, you have to apply the law when it comes to an arbitration. Wow, that's re that's really interesting. So this is a great segue to my next question, which is, um, can you ex can you describe for us a little bit about the process that clients can expect? So I mean, well, so one of the actually the question that popped up when you're when you're talking is, um, can can I start off with mediation and then oh, like how can I ask this? Um, because see, a lot of people don't really know what to choose, right? So they might say, okay, yo, let's try mediation. And let's say two days into the mediation, they go, maybe we should go into med, med art. Can people do that? Can people just kind of say, oh, you know, let, or, or, or is uh, med art more like, well, the parties have to agree right from the get-go that they need that agreement 
between the parties to say, hey, let's try med arc. Is that what people are supposed to do? So just kind of walk me through the process a little bit. Um, maybe oh, Laura, Laura first. <laughs> sure, Laura. Um, so they're, they're, they're separate processes and generally uh, individuals do, uh, do understand each one. So they are provided with information from the get-go about what mediation entails, what mediation arbitration entails. Okay. And um, they can, uh, generally they, they have to enter one or the other because of some of the, um, some of the details that Marty had suggested in, uh, in, his, uh, in his description. Uh, when it comes to mediation, if they're entering an agreement with a mediator, they're not necessarily required to have independent legal advice. However, if they are going to enter into a blend, uh, so a, a hybrid of mediation arbitration, then they are required to obtain independent legal advice. So, so generally, it's, it's one or the other. That's not to say that if mediation fails, then they cannot, you know, move into a mediation arbitration or directly to arbitration and that's a completely different so it's no longer a hybrid but it's a completely different process than uh, uh, than med arb and, and you, can't just, you can't just walk out of an arbitration so let's say i'm in the, at mediation we've had, we have 15 issues we resolve 10 of them we have five left mm -hmm. and the person says thank you very much we signed an agreement on the 10 issues uh as far as the five go I'm out of here. I'm not going to deal with it. I, I don't like the, her attitude or his attitude or or the arbitrator's attitude or yeah. arbitrator to be. I'm out of here. You can't do that. And a default order, a, a meaning an order can be made in your absence. You don't have to be there, just like in court. So if I have a trial date next Monday in court and I don't show up, I mean, and there's no explanation. They try to contact and go through all the whole steps and everything else. The long and short is an order can be made in your absence against you. So you can't just drop it. And I think I, I like, and a lot of lawyers don't like, and there's other reasons what I'm giving you, but what I like about mediation arbitration is the finality. Um, you know, uh, our, our, our wonderful Philip, Philip Epstein, who just passed away the other day, of course, as, as people will get to know. Um, used to say that I loved mediation arbitration. We did tons of them, but I can't stand, I love the need, but I can't stand the ARB. And it's because the ARB means that you failed on the mediation, not you, but the parties have. And then the a judgment has to be made and then you have to tell people what to do. Mediation, you decide, it's your show, it's, your, it's not your lawyers, you're there and you're gonna make a decision for your own life. Um, that's the, the major difference, and especially when you go to, to court. I mean, oftentimes I've heard judges say, you want me, a stranger, to make decisions for your, you know, right. uh, children's lives? And often and they, they do, unfortunately, a lot of times. They don't smarten up. Right. But um, uh, so I like the idea of, of mediation arbitration as a hammer over someone's head, if I can use that word, meaning that if you know you have somebody who's going to run, Yes. So in mediation, for example, uh, you know, I don't like where this is going. After two hours, I'm out of here, goodbye. I, I hang up, I turn off the Zoom, yeah. I'm out of here. And nothing said. Uh, unless it's open mediation, then you could do a report that he pulled out. But that's it, nothing else. However, with mediation arbitration, you can't do that. So there's finality. And I think that's the biggest selling um, uh point in mediation arbitration where uh, if people know they're dealing with a very difficult spouse right. and uh, or there's issues that they know that they're not going to want to resolve beforehand or they've had problems before, bearing in mind that hopefully negotiations have already taken place between themselves or the lawyers, then the fact that you have that ARB coming up, then you're going to take it seriously because you know that the mediator is listening to what's going on. And, and, you know, it, I, it is impossible to separate the two. You've taken in stuff. You should be not taking stuff in, into account, information that is. Uh, but it's inevitable that you do, being human, just like a, a jury, when, when a, law, a lawyer will make a, a, a comment and then the, the judge will say, disregard that. Well, yeah. Really? I mean, how are they going to disregard it? However, um, 
there is evidence and you do just be saying, oh, you know what, I know he makes $50,000 under the table. Well then, just saying it is not enough. In arbitration, you have to prove it. Uh, or you have to have some um, outside, you know, external evidence or something pointing to it. Uh, so it's a lot more, yeah, a lot more, it's a lot more serious, but I think people are a lot more serious, my feeling is, with, me, with mediation arbitration, knowing that down the road, a decision will be made. So I better smarten up and take this seriously. But having said that, I mean, mediation works. I mean, there's so many cases I've done, and I'm sure, Laura, where you walk into it, and you think there's no way that this case is going to resolve, and it does. It's unbelievable. So mediation is very powerful, right, Laura? Like, I mean, just even mediation alone, alone I imagine. Uh, what is your, your practical experience, say, in terms of the success rate? Like, I mean, do a lot of people just kind of like um, reach a mutual agreement after mediation? I mean, you often probably don't have to go to arbitration, right? Well, most in mediation do reach an agreement. So, I mean, and, and the resolution rate for um, those, they're, they're different mindsets of, uh, I believe also of, uh, of those people who are entering mediation or entering mediation arbitration. There's a difference in the way that they want to approach their own family matters. So those who you encounter entering pure mediation, even though knowing the information about mediation arbitration and still choosing mediation, they have, they have a, um, a desire to have control over their issues and decision-making. They have a, um, a mutual understanding that neither one of them wants to have someone else making a decision on their behalves or, or their family's uh, affairs. So they don't want the, the, the incentive or the hammer over the head that arbitration would, uh, would entail. So there's two schools of thought and, um, you know, I wouldn't call it success rate. I think it's, uh, it's the resolution rate. Resolution rate. Um, ma majority, I mean, about 90% to more um, settle in mediation, but that's because uh, we deal with more mediation and Marty does deal with more mediation arbitration. So there's a, there's a little bit of a difference, but Marty, in, in the mediation arbitrations you're doing, um, do they mostly settle in the mediation phase or they get to the, the arbitration phase? Well, I've had a bad run lately, so I can't. <laughs> because it's I have COVID. Tomorrow. <laughs> I have an arbitration that didn't Arbit settle yesterday. <laughs> uh, I mean, it didn't settle a couple of, uh, a month ago, actually. So it's going into arbitration. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's, sim it's, it's simple. What they're doing is they're going to do a focused hearing. They have these a lot now in court where you do affidavits. Uh, and then the parties are then cross-examined on their affidavits and you can reply to it. But, um, you know, it just depends on the case and, and uh, on the personalities. Uh, we, uh, Laura and I had a case, so I'm, I'm going to be very careful here not to give any identification or any identified information, but uh, there was an important issue regarding the children. And it would meant a lot to one of the spouses, one of the parents, uh, even though that parent may have thought that he could have or she could have gotten a better deal, but it was the the fact that the 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 children were going to benefit from the result was more important to that person than actually fifty thousand dollars. I I'm just mm -hmm. throwing that up in, in the air. Uh, and that, when you go to court, it, it's cut and dry. It's or you go in your arbitration. This is the way it is. You know, it's it's uh, not just child support guidelines or, or whatever, but it's 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 uh, not just an equalization payment. This is what I'm basing the figures on. This is what it is. Thank you very much. Goodbye. It's not. It's not. You know. It's it. That's the way it is. Whereas you can d come up with creative solutions and mediation that are going to meet your need. I have a line in my little information package I give people, and it's calling. It's called "Take Back Your Take Back Your Life." And uh, there's a thing that women uh, organizations have called Take Back the, N the Night. Uh, and that's where I got it from. But it's Take Back Your Life. And I think that's what mediation is all about and collaborative process. It's taking back your life. You, you be in control, not some lawyer or not some judge. 
but you you do it. You come up and make the suggestions. However, you get into situations where you have people who are very difficult, and that's where I think the art part can play a a, a good part in the process. Thank you.